Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. My name is Julian and this is the waiver wire video for week 15 of the fantasy hockey season. This is the video where I tell you guys which players you should consider adding to your team to help you win this week and future weeks of the fantasy season. Before we get started guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Tipped. I'm constantly posting updates there to help you win each and every week. Moving along now, let's jump right into the schedule for this week so we can take a look at what exactly we're in for. And as you can see, guys, the off nights are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. As usual, all of those nights have less than half the teams playing on them. But Sunday and Monday are relatively busy in terms of off nights. They're as busy as an off night can get. They have 14 teams playing, which is just under half the teams in the league. Now, there are a couple of teams that play on all four off nights this week, and those teams are Boston and Colorado. They play Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, which is an awesome schedule for them. And then there are five teams that play three off nights this week. Those teams are Chicago, Washington, Dallas, Minnesota, and the New York Rangers. Now, Chicago and Washington, I have a star there because they play both those Wednesday and those Friday off nights, which are the most valuable ones, whereas Dallas, Minnesota, and New York don't play on Wednesday. There's one more team that I don't have listed here that plays on Wednesday and on Friday, and that team is Detroit. So that's another team that you could consider adding for those off nights. The other thing to note is that there are three teams with pretty bad schedules this week. And by bad schedule, I mean they only play two games this week. And those teams are Nashville, Tampa Bay, and Toronto. So if you have any players that are low-owned on those teams, you could definitely consider dropping them because you're not going to get the most out of them this week. One thing, guys, before we jump into the forwards, I'm not going to repeat guys that I mentioned in this video last week. So if you do want some other really solid options, go ahead and check out my waiver wire video from last week right up there. For example, I could have easily kept Keller and Kempe in this video both still awesome ads, but I wanted to show you guys some other players that you should consider right now. Now, first on the list, I have Braden Shen of the St. Louis Blues, and right now he's practicing on the left wing with O'Reilly and David Perron, and he's also on that top power play with O'Reilly and David Perron. That's a really awesome deployment for Braden Shen, and in his last game, he scored four points, two goals, and two assists. Yeah, right now he's hot and he's playing on a great line. That's a really awesome place for him to be. So Shen honestly makes for a really good ad right now. And next I have my man, Matt Zuccarello. I've been repping this guy all year round and he's over a point per game on the season and somehow he's only 54% owned. I don't know what it's going to take for this guy to like jump up in ownership, but it's absolutely crazy how Zuccarello is just over 50% owned. He's over a point per game, guys. He's playing with Kaprizov, has excellent chemistry with him on both 5-on-5 five five and the power play. I don't know how much more he's going to have to do for him to be added in more league. It's kind of crazy at this point. Then I have Tyler Toffoli of the Montreal Canadiens, who's finally back from injury and has come back really, really strong through two games. He has two goals and an assist, and he's playing with Nick Suzuki on both the top line and the top power play in Montreal. And we all know Toffoli can be really, really solid. So... Honestly, a pretty good ad right now. Then I have Jonathan Taves of the Chicago Blackhawks. And like I mentioned, guys, a little bit earlier, Chicago has a nice schedule this week. They play Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which are all off nights, especially those Wednesday and Friday off nights are pretty valuable. If Jonathan Taves is floating around there, he's been doing a lot better as of late. He has five points in his last seven games, is playing on a line with Kubelik and Brinkett, and is also getting top power play time. Jonathan Taves is definitely turning it around a little bit. I mean, five points in his last seven games isn't exactly bad. So definitely makes for a good ad, at least for those off nights. Next, I have Boone Jenner of the Columbus Blue Jackets, who has 26 points through 37 games this year. And lately, he's been pretty close to a point per game. He mans that top power play and also the top line in Columbus, both with Oliver Bjorkstrand. And he's also a face-off wizard. So if you're in a Cats league that has face-offs, that's another really big asset of Jenner. And he's been really, really good lately, so definitely a pretty solid pickup. Next is Anton Lindell of the Florida Panthers, 27% owned. And Lindell, despite being on Florida's third line, has managed to consistently produce a point per game over the last little while, which is really impressive. He's been one of the best rookies this year, and he's on an insanely hot streak right now. So stream him as long as he stays hot, guys. And I have Alex Tuck of the Buffalo Sabres, 26% owned, and in his last eight games, he has eight points, which is 
pretty freaking solid. He gets to play on the top line and the top power play in Buffalo, so definitely not a bad deployment. Obviously, it's Buffalo, but he's probably the best player on the team and therefore is worth a look. Then I have Valeri Nachushkin of the Colorado Avalanche, and this past week he was on the COVID list for the most part, but this week he should be back and playing with Kadri and Burakovsky on that second line, and kadri has been awesome all year, so Nachushkin getting the opportunity there makes for a pretty good pickup, especially since Colorado has a really, really good schedule with those Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday off nights. Next is Garnet Hathaway, Washington Capitals, 20% owned. And assuming he's not suspended for his hit on Brad Marchand, he has some decent value this week. He gets to play on the top line with Alexander Ovechkin, is someone that gives you a decent floor due to hits, and Washington has a really good off-night schedule this week with those Monday, Wednesday, and Friday games. Next is Jeff Skinner of the Buffalo Sabres, has five goals in his last eight games and seven points in those eight games, which is pretty solid. He also is playing on the top power play and top line in Buffalo. At only 12% owned, at a point per game guy, that's a pretty good ad. And next is my Manscaped must add player of the video, Eric Holla. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word fantasy tip. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code word fantasy tip at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence, guys, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Now guys, Manscaped has some amazing products if I do say so myself. So I'm hooking you up with my own code word, fantasy tip. Get yourself 20% off and free shipping at the website at manscaped.com and get yourself something nice. Now why is Eric Howla my Manscaped must add player of the video? It's actually pretty simple. He has nine points in his last 10 games. But somehow, instead of being added in more leagues on Yahoo, he was dropped in 4% of leagues. How does that even make sense? He's on a great line with Pasternak and Taylor Hall. That's insanely hot right now. And I understand that Marshawn got injured, but even after Marshawn got injured, they kept that line intact. And it's been really producing, right? And on top of how hot Hala and his line is, the Bruins have a really favorable schedule next week. They play on all of the off nights, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So if Hala is available in your league, he makes for a really excellent ad. Then I have Craig Smith of the Boston Bruins, 8% owned. He's been a little bit disappointing lately. And with Marshawn getting injured, his value definitely does go down a little bit. But assuming he still gets to play on that top line with Patrice Bergeron, still not a bad place to be. And if you're in a deep league, he makes for a decent streamer for those off nights this week since he does shoot a lot and he's starting to shoot again now. Then I have Alex Newhook of the Colorado Avalanche. And I don't absolutely love his deployment, but he is a pretty solid rookie. And he is their third line center. But if you're in a really, really deep league and you need someone for those off nights, you could do worse than Alex Newhook. Next, I have Matt Boldy of the Minnesota Wild. Has four points in four games since joining the team. He's a great rookie and is looking great on a line with Fiala and seems to be getting a decent amount of power play time as well. Don't mind adding Matt Boldy. Don't let the fact that he's on the taxi squad discourage you. It's mostly just a paper move, and he's being moved back and forth. He's still practicing with the team. And last but not least, I have Brandon Hagel of the Chicago Blackhawks, only 1% owned, and he's quietly put together a pretty solid season with 19 points in 33 games, and he's currently playing on the top line with Patrick Kane, as well as the top power play with Patrick Kane and Taves, and lately he's been pretty hot. So if you want to stream someone in a really deep league, for those off nights, Hagel is honestly a really good option for those Monday, Wednesday, and Friday off nights. Moving on to defensemen now, and first on the list, I have Jacob Chikrin of the Arizona Coyotes, 55% rostered, and he's finally back in the lineup. As of this recording, he only did play one game since returning from injury, but did record an assist, and we all know how dangerous Chikrin can be. He is getting time on that top Arizona power play, which bodes well for his future success. Then I have Jeff Petrie of the Montreal Canadiens, 41% rostered, and I included him here because a lot of people are adding him. I'm a little bit hesitant on Jeff Petrie. If you're in a league that you're desperate for defense, go ahead and add him now because he will likely be added. But Jeff Petrie has had a miserable season so far, and the Habs have had kind of a miserable season as a whole, right? So Jeff Petrie, 
yeah, finally he's been playing better, but he's up to only three points on the entire season. So, you know, tamper your expectations. Hopefully he does start to turn it around. We all know how good Jeff Petrie can be, but I need to see it before I believe it. Then I have Rasmus Anderson of the Calgary Flames, 29% rostered. And Calgary has moved him back onto their top power play. It looked like that Chillington and Manjapane thing was just for one game. They put Chillington there. Didn't look that great. So Rasmus Henderson is back to manning that top power play and therefore should be owned in a lot more than 29% of leagues. Then I have Philip Pronek of the Detroit Red Wings, 22% owned. He's not my favorite option in the entire world, but he has been doing relatively decent lately. And he has been a pretty solid under the radar defenseman all year round. So if you're in a deep league, Hronek makes for a decent ad. Then I have Braden McNabb of the Vegas Golden Knights. Well, he won't put up points, he's putting up a lot of peripherals, hits, shots, and blocks. The other day, he put 10 hits up in a single game. Now, he's not going to do that all the time. He's better for blocks than he is for hits, but he will give you a safe floor night in and out. And Vegas does play four games this week, so you're in for a good amount of peripherals. Then I have Damon Severson of the New Jersey Devils, 13% owned only, and I could have made him a must-add player because he is still manning that top power play in New Jersey, and before he went down with COVID, he was doing very, very well. I think Severson is going to have a really solid year until Dougie Hamilton comes back from injury. Next are Mikey Anderson and Calvin DeHaan of the Los Angeles Kings and the Chicago Blackhawks, both 3% owned. And lately, both have been putting up some really, really solid peripherals and giving themselves a really nice floor night in and out. Now, that may not necessarily last super, super long, but while they're doing this, guys, they make for excellent streamers. If you need some guys that'll give you, you know, a nice floor just to make sure you get some points here and there. Then I have Eric Gustafson of the Chicago Blackhawks, and don't look now, but over his last three games, he has four assists, and he is now manning that top power play in Chicago. So yeah, while he hasn't been great over the past few seasons, there was a year in Chicago where he managed to score 60 points. I'm not saying he's going to be that amazing again, but he is getting the opportunity and therefore, if you're in a super deep league, he might be worth the gamble. Then I have Cam York of the Philadelphia Flyers, 1% owned, and lately he's been the guy getting the top power play time in Philadelphia. Clearly, Provorov and Yandel have not really worked out that well on the power play, so Cam York is getting his time. He has three points in his last six games, two of which were power play points, so he might be worth a scoop in deeper leagues because he seems to be working out at least a little bit. Jumping into some goalies now, and first on the list, I have Vitek Vanacek of the Washington Capitals. He seems to be playing really well lately and getting more starts than Samsonov. So if you are a Samsonov owner, Vanacek right now is a must add because you don't want to be losing out on those starts. Vanacek is also addable in a lot more leagues now because while he's getting starts for a really good team, he's definitely someone that's worth having on your roster. Then I have Ottinger and Holtby of the Dallas Stars. And while neither have been that great lately, they are still the starting goalies in Dallas. And if you're desperate and you need someone to start some games for you, those guys are not the worst pickups. Then I have James Reimer and Aiden Hill of the San Jose Sharks. And Aiden Hill played very well while James Reimer was down with an injury. Therefore, Aiden Hill will probably see some more starts. And at the moment, I see them splitting the starts 50 50. And I have Pavel Francis of the Colorado Avalanche, and I've been saying to pick him up for weeks, guys, and this is why. Last game, he got a shutout, and the game before that, he relieved Kemper when he went out with concussion protocol. Kemper is fine. So like I've been saying for weeks, because of his hot play, he may get to start 50% of the starts for Colorado going forward as long as he stays playing very well like he is. Then I have Capo Kokkinen of the Minnesota Wild, and he's played really, really well with Talbot out. Now, Talbot should be coming back this week or next week, but Kokkinen could potentially see some more starts going down the stretch because of how well he played. Minnesota in the past haven't been the best to Kokkinen, even when he does play well, doesn't always get that many starts, but he's worth holding for now if you have him or picking up in a deeper league to see if maybe he does get half the starts down the stretch. Moving on to St. Louis, and I have Ville Husso on this list, and he's someone that I did not think I'd ever include on this list this year, but Ville Husso seems to be starting half the games in St. Louis right now, just about, and he's playing very, very well, so as long as he stays super hot and playing super well, St. Louis doesn't really have a choice but to start him every second game or so. So if that's what you need, someone who's playing well starting every second game, 
honestly a pretty solid ad. Then I have Karel Vemelka of the Arizona Coyotes, and he's been playing very, very well considering on how bad of a team he plays on. Vemelka has been really, really good all year and is starting pretty much every single game for Arizona. So if you need a starting goalie that's starting every game, Vemelka is your guy. Then I have Anton Forsberg, who's been pretty solid all year, although last game didn't look that great. But Murray is out with a sickness right now, so as long as Murray is out, Forsberg will be starting. And even when Murray comes back, Forsberg should still get a decent chunk of the starts, I think. Then I have Aaron Dell of the Buffalo Sabres, and so far he's been playing really, really well as Buffalo starting goalie. He's like their sixth goalie they're using this year, but nonetheless, he's still playing relatively decently. And therefore, if you need a starting goalie right now, Aaron Dell... Not too bad. Just note that Craig Anderson is practicing, so he could be back relatively soon. Then I have Samuel Montembeau of the Montreal Canadiens, 2% owned. And he's also been playing super well. If you're in a league that counts saves and you don't necessarily need a win, Samuel Montembeau is a really solid ad because Jake Allen now is out for the next eight weeks. Therefore, Samuel Montembeau is going to be the starter for a while because who knows how long Carey Price is going to be out. Montembeau gets pelted with shots every single night. Therefore, if you need saves in a points-based league or whatever, Montembeau is definitely a solid at. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Hope you guys enjoyed the content, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.